Well, hello everyone, and welcome to this Management Cues webinar. Our topic for today is all about charting your course, navigating your management career successfully. I'm Marisa Stoltz, your HROD executive expert, bringing you more than 25 years of experience and your host for today's webinar. Now, moving through a career progression takes intention. This is an area where the five functions of management really come into play. The planning, organizing, staffing, coordinating, and controlling functions of management can be applied to your career trajectory. Today's session will provide insight into how to manage your career progression. If you're ambitious to move through the ranks, this session will provide the insight necessary to give you an advantage. To walk us through the insights for today's webinar is CEO and founder of Management Cues, Dr. Myra Austin. Dr. Myra, take it away. Oh, you're phenomenal. Let me put my glasses on because today is going to be a challenge. So we're going to put our smart, our, our, our thinking faces on. Okay, so um, let me know if the, the company slide shows right now. Yep. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, moving right along. So let me share a little bit about Management Cues and why it's relevant to today's topic. So Management Cues is a company that provides training and development for managers out there. And we do it through a, a, an array of different methods. We do it through templates, through tools, through products, through custom online training courses, and uh, through different channels like these webinars, Instagram Live, all these different channels, all with the ulti ultimate goal of reaching managers and helping them succeed, as well as filling that equity space for representation in management roles. And so this topic is very special because we need more representation in the management roles. We need diversity and inclusion. We need problem solvers that think of problems in a different way. So that's a little bit about management cues. So a little bit about Marisa and myself today. I have over 20 years of operations management and leadership experience. It didn't go, let me see. Did it move now? Nope. Oh, why isn't it working? Okay, guys, hold on. I think we have a we have we a have little a, hiccup. A tech, a little tech issue. A little tech issue here. Hold on. Let me stop sharing and try again. Um, so that we can continue. And I think I could talk as we go, but let me see here. Um, okay, I think we're gonna have a tech issue today. How does that look? I can see the title page. The title page. Okay, let me see here. All right, folks, sorry for the technical issues. It happens to the best of us. Okay, let's see here. It doesn't seem to be moving on my end. Okay. Worst case scenario, Dr. Myra, you talk us through it. Worst case, but it's not as fun. Okay, how about now? I think this is gonna be the best that we can do is yep. do it this way for whatever we reason today. Yeah. Okay, great. That way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I have over 20 years of operations and management and leadership experience. And so I've gone into companies, I've structured them out, I've helped managers move along their career path. And it has been a great joy for me to mentor them and to see them blossom into uh, the great contributors that they can be. Um, in the same type of space, and, and the reason why we have a blast on these webinars is because Marisa is an HR executive and leader herself, and she provides not only a wealth of knowledge, but she really does support managers um, in a unique way. I've seen HR, effective HR leaders throughout my career, but there's been few that I've really partnered with because they've done such an amazing job at setting managers up to succeed. So that's why we're both here. That's why we're excited to share our experience with you today. Um, and, and, you know, we hope you ask questions, you stay in tune and continue to, to grow with us, right? It's a partnership that we're trying to, to um, enhance here. So what we're going to go through today is going to be, uh, we're going to define management for you. Uh, before you move through and take on a journey and take on a desire, it's really important to break it down to what it is you're getting yourself into, um, what it looks like, and, and really asking yourself as a manager, is this what you want, right? Is mm. this really what you want? Because only when you're committed, when you're passionate, when you understand the depth behind roles in business, do you stand out. 
Do you become exceptional? Do you uh, bring some level of mastery, right? So I think it's important to, to note that, right? So the other thing that we wanna talk about is the benefits of taking something on like management because there are definitely benefits out there. Uh, not only is it a privilege to be a manager, but a big responsibility. So there has to be a balance of thought um, and intention behind it if you're going to be successful. And then we're going to today going to go through from top to bottom. So we're going to go from entry level management all the way through executive level. I've navigated through all of it um, and now uh, moved on. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, but I've definitely done it. I didn't have a traditional path. So we'll talk about that too. Um, so if you think it's not for you, you may be surprised. It may be exactly for you and you might be the contributor that the workforce is missing. So Remember that as we navigate through these things. Um, before I continue and get right into it, Marisa, do you have anything to add to our um, to our management Agenda. audience out there? Yeah. So um, to to those of you who are thinking about getting into management, this is a great way. Uh, this particular webinar is a great way to help you understand what you're getting into. You may decide that this isn't for you, and that is absolutely okay. Right. I mean, it's really important for people to understand that going to work doesn't have to be drudgery. Right? It can be a very happy place. Uh, and so finding your bliss and what it is that you do best is really um, what I'm all about uh, and ensuring that that people can bring their best every day. Yeah. Preach that good word. That's what I'm talking about. We want people happy, committed and invested in a healthy way. Um, so that you thrive personally and then can contribute to a larger objective. So this is what we're going to start with. We're going to start with the real deal because that's what I think we need to understand is what does management look like in the workforce and in the market, right? That should help you uh, align where you're at and where you're headed. So there are over 1,920,000 and 990,000 managers, right? Million, millions of managers here currently employed in the United States. 49% of all managers are women, 51% are men. So this is a demographic that we're, that we're looking at, which is why we need to continue to create equity to have balance between how we're contributing and who we're representing. The average manager age is 44 years old. The most common ethnicity of managers is white at 67%, followed by Hispanic or Latino at 15.5, Asian at 16.4, uh, 6 and Black or African American at 6.3. So you can see the skews in terms of representation and management. So if you're on this webinar today and you make part of these demographics, think about the contribution that's missing in the organization you're in. Um, it's important for you to be representative of people like you in your environment and to lead with that contribution. In 2022, women earned 89% of what men earned. We're still fighting that fight, right? We're still, and we're still contributing um, in ways that have this, the same or better outcomes. And so we have to consolidate these areas in the management space as we navigate and move through, we are the difference. We make the difference as we're making decisions in the workplace. That's why management is so important. 10% of all managers are LGBT. So again, skewed. We're only understood when we're represented and that's just the bottom line, right? Managers are 55% more likely to work at private companies in comparison to public companies. So these are some parameters for you guys to think about in terms of what representation looks like in the role of management and in your individual companies, okay? Well Anything said. to add there, Marisa? No, I was going to say the same thing. Like, yeah, if there are any HR leaders out there or managers, talk to your HR leaders, encourage them to look at the demographics of your organization and consider what they can do with those demographics moving forward and how they can shift. Absolutely. It plays into our, our company sustainability from, from a culture and an operations standpoint. Uh, longevity only happens when people feel acknowledged, represented, and like they're part of where the direction is moving. So keep that in mind. 
So defining management. So I loved this quote and I really felt like it spoke to what we're talking about today. Management is the coordination and administration of tasks to achieve a goal. Such administration activities include setting the organization's strategy and coordinating the efforts of staff to accomplish these objectives through the application of available resources. Management can also refer to the seniority structure of staff members within an organization. So this is a very transactional quote, but this is what management is, right? So it encompasses all of these areas. Uh, it's multifaceted. If you're doing it well, no, it's not easy. It requires skill and discipline. Um, and as you move through the ladder, um, a depth. Uh, and we'll talk about what that depth is. Okay. So here are the levels of management that typically exist in organizations. And this is important because you wanna get a, an, an idea for your footing. Where are you currently standing? And so entry level really speaks to leads, supervisors, assistants, assistant managers. Mid-level speaks to managers, project managers, right? Intermediate type of, of level. Senior level really kind of encompasses directors and individual contributors maybe operating at that level, intermediate, um, or partnering or leading in a different way or managing in a different way, but at the director level. And then executive level is composed of these common roles that we, we typically hear about, right? CEO, COO, CFO, CMO, and CHRO, yeah, she, which is, yeah, is missing, missing there. CHRO, <laughs> come on, girl. Um, I didn't put them all. One, one comment about project managers, because in a lot of companies, project managers are considered managers, but they manage people that don't report to them. They have to manage through influence. Yeah. So having this type of training is just as important. Oh, I agree. And I think you want to think of management if you have some uh, people in your charge, whether directly or indirectly, because you're still responsible for the outcome and it's still relates to moving the troops, mobilizing Absolutely. the troops. So so that's really what Marisa is saying and is that even if you don't have staff underneath you, some of the the direct management skill is still going to be a requirement of performance. So Absolutely. great great call out there. Okay. So the benefits of being management. So this is the enticing part. This is uh, I would say often what we focus on and not the rest that we should consider as well as part of the equation right? This is kind of the outcome. And so this is probably the last thing you should consider um, as you're making your decision as to what your commitment looks like to management. But it means more opportunity for personal growth, higher pay, more opportunities for advancement, a higher degree of influence with your team members and others, um, as well as policy and culture. You have kind of a direct relationship with the outcomes that are taking place in those areas. You have a, a higher opportunity to develop as a leader. And so that is a different type of function. And, and we're going to be having a webinar on that coming up in the near future. But the functions of leadership include things like influencing and motivating. And so it's, it's a different type of interaction with team members. Um, you have greater autonomy, right, which really means more freedom to, to do things, to decide, to, to influence, to do all these other things and make decisions around what happens to those around you. It's more opportunities to help mentor and, de and develop other managers and other leaders. It's a higher impact on team career advancement. You have a direct impact on the mobility of others. And so that is pretty significant. Um, it's always been something that I carefully think about when I think, am I about to change the quality of life for this person? Because that is extremely powerful. Right. And so, again, with great power, as they say in Spider-Man, comes great, comes responsibility. great responsibility. That's right. Um, anything to add to that, Marisa? No, it's well said. Thank you, Dr. Myra. OK, you got it. OK, so the management journey. So now we're going to navigate. OK, so now we're going to get our navigation hats on and we're really going to understand entry level through executive level um, when it comes to I'm going to say driving because I have that in my mind right now. But in driving your career, right? Instead of just falling into it. Because when we're intentional, then we get what we want, right? When we let somebody else kind of take the driver's seat into what happens to us or leave it up to the employer, we're really not 
driving the situation and we're not intentional about the outcomes that we get. We're expecting yeah. them to, to drive what is important to us and that will never happen. I have so, one caveat. I have yeah. one caveat to that, Dr. Myra. Um, with intention uh, and direction, uh, we can reach our goal. Sometimes the trajectory goes in a way that we didn't expect. Yeah. Right. So um, looking at our career path with some flexibility is really important. Um, each time my career took a path that I wasn't expecting, uh, something good came came from it that I would have never planned for. So planning is great. I mean, we you want to uh, apply the functions of management to your career journey, but you also want to have some flexibility regarding what could be. I agree. And I think that's really wise. Uh, the other thing that I would add to, to what Marisa is saying is self-awareness. It You know, I think that one of the most valuable things you can get out of this webinar is are you self-aware about where you're at, what you're contributing and your impact? Because sometimes we really think that a decision was made inappropriately, but we're not addressing maybe the gaps that exist with our contribution. So I, I think plan is, is great. Planning is going to help you get there faster. There are always plot twists in every journey, right? So the resiliency to those plot twists comes from your self-awareness. And saying, okay, well, now I have to go this way because I know what I'm contributing. So start also by recognizing the value you bring to the table and articulating it. So we're going to talk about that too. But great, great um, feedback there, Marisa. Okay, so we're going to start with entry level, right? These are the newbies, right? For management, and it can happen at any stage in your career. If you've never managed, it can happen at any age um, with any level of experience, right? Just, just it, it, you could be a great individual contributor for 20 years and suddenly you're a new manager and the challenge is the same no matter what if you haven't managed people before okay so here's where we start with entry level management so here's what you want to do to get into an, an an entry level management role if that's your heart's desire and you feel like you're ready for it you want to take some risks so be prepared to be courageous because you have to step into these things right don't be afraid to interview for an entry-level management role if you feel you have the skills for the job. Excel at being an individual contributor to start. So focus on your skill set, on what you're good at, on what could potentially be transferable, and make sure you know what those are and you can list them verbatim, right? That you're very familiar with what you're bringing to the table. Study and observe effective managers. And I say effective managers because we have a lot of Gaps in management in the workplace. Studies show 60% approximately of managers in the U.S. have never received management training. So yes, there are some bad managers out there. So pay attention to the ones that actually deliver, who have happy teams, who have high-performing teams. Look for these things when you're looking for an example. Pay attention to their skills, their qualities, their management and leadership style. What works, what doesn't, how do you feel about them? Those things are really important when you're looking at what type of management you want to step into. You want to show initiative. You want to ask about succession planning in the organization. How do we plan for succession here? And I'll have Marisa speak about succession and what it is in a minute because she really is the expert here for that particular area. But you want to understand the path that the employer has for you. That will tie your um, eagerness and your desire to be in management, it'll tie it in, it will align it with your career goal. Work on articulating what your transferable skills are in the role that you desire. Be clear on what do you already do that is complementary to a role that you want. Request an individual development plan. So an individual develop plan is not a performance plan. Okay, an individual development plan is what is my path? What do I need to work on to get to that management role? And it's a very reasonable request. Okay, and then ultimately, if you've done all of this stuff, request your promotion, right? Step into it. If you think you deserve it, you have to justify it, right? And so be prepared to do that. So let me bounce back to Marisa on succession planning. Uh, that is also a gap that I see in the workforce where people, team members, 
and managers and sometimes new HR leaders don't know what succession planning is. Yeah. So succession planning is the process by which an organization identifies the next person for a particular role or the next people for a particular role using tools, using metrics, using experience, uh, and having discussions about talent uh, and who would be ready now, maybe ready in a year after a certain amount of experience or ready in two years with certain education and experience. And so um, you ask about a succession plan because first and foremost, you want to let your boss know you are interested in progressing, right? Now, there's some people who, who love what they do and want to stay as individual contributors. That's absolutely fabulous. And we like those, those individuals to stay where they are if that's what makes them happy. But if you're interested in moving through an organization, you, you need to let someone know right? You've got to go through the process of getting feedback, right? So that you can work on and become self-aware and work on those gaps that you have. Uh, and the succession plan sometimes just happens at the highest levels of the organization to make sure that the leadership, the, the leaders that are running the business are in place and can be replaced if necessary, right? If you hit the lottery and you decide you don't want to go to work the next day, Who's going to step in? Uh, and sometimes, depending on the size of the organization, the organization it does filter down into the uh, levels of entry level management. Um, so really important for you to ask those questions so that you understand the, the rigor that your organization provides and how you can engage in that rigor. Yeah, excellent. Excellent. Yeah, so that's what it means. If you have never heard it before, it's important to know that this is a standard. It's a standard of career development. So entry level management. So what, what is it, right? What does it really encompass? Well, this is the initial management stage. It's where a ma management begins. It, it often involves transitioning from an individual contributor to a managerial role. Responsibilities may include overseeing small teams or projects. So that's where you start to develop a man management muscle. That's where it begins is in this kind of entry level stage. And what are the skills that you need in this stage? So this is where you want to do your quality check right now. If you're entry level or your desire is entry level, these are the skills you should have and should be working towards. Effective communication. Okay. And this is a continuous thing. Forever and ever, it just never ends. You just get better and better at communication. Basic fundamental team leadership, how to lead people, right? So I always start my new managers with understanding the functions of leadership, which we're going to have a webinar series around. Time management, be very good with your time and prioritizing. That's going to be an essential component and it's going to continue throughout these different levels. People skills, be good with people. You have to really to succeed in management, you have to like people, right? So if you hate being and working with people, it's going to be very challenging for you to succeed in a management space. Some knowledge around the most common state, federal, and county employment compliance employer requirements. Now, I will say this, when you don't get that kind of training, you learn the hard way and it's very painful for you and the employer. So getting a list of fundamental things to learn about um, can be very, very helpful when you're getting started. Uh, the, there is a common list of like five most common areas in HR um, that you can start with and we can provide to in, in the tool that we provide after um, for you guys to start to get an idea of what those fundamentals are. You want some knowledge of the HR fundamental handling areas, such as wage and hour rules and regulations, workplace safety, and discrimination and harassment. And those actually are, are part of that list that I'm mentioning in terms of compliance. So they partner. And so if, if you're a new manager, just getting the basics around that is going to set you up to succeed, right? And as you're coming into management and as you're managing at an entry level. So I'll, before I move on, Marisa, this is such a, a, I think, an essential part, and it's so often missed. What would you have? Would what would you say around the HR fundamental handling areas for our new managers? Well, for new managers, you have to be a strong performer 
to even consider moving into an entry level management position. So that's where you will shine first and foremost. Um, you talk about the basic fundamentals of team leadership. I'd like to add to that the basic fundamentals of management, mm -hmm. right? Like, you know, what what is your role? So get very clear about um, the definition of your role within the business that you work within so that you have a, a full understanding of what is expected of you. Yeah. And I think that that really falls into um, if if you know what the job description is, check that out. Right. Help that define Absolutely. and round out. Um, the expectation of the entry level management roles in your organization. And then lastly, some knowledge of the compliance requirements in your industry specifically. So industries sometimes are regulated by law in a different way compared to others. So as a new manager, you need to know what those what those are uh, because they're going to be specific to the area you're operating in and how you're going to train others to operate. So that's part of that responsibility, okay? Okay, so what helps with mobility into um, this entry-level management role? So these are the things that really help you, okay? You wanna have a mentor inside the organization. If there's a manager or a leader that you see is successful, you know, spend some time with them, take them out for coffee, learn with them, and partner with them. Have mentors in different areas outside the organization in different areas of business. So seek out an HR mentor. Seek out a Marisa in your life. It'll change your life, right? Um, seek out sales or whatever, whatever it is that you're operating in, the space you're operating in. Look outside of your business so you have objective feedback. Um, you know, you don't have... Um, somebody that's working maybe with you and sees maybe a conflict of interest. So it's important to look outside and build that network. Take any and every opportunity with the employer to train. If they're willing to pay for it, take it. It's gold. It's only going to be something that adds to your marketability. And for you, this is your leverage when it comes to negotiating in the next role, uh, whether inside the company or outside. Continue to work on your education. There's so many resources now, you know, online, free webinars, read books, you know, stay informed. Uh, can, uh, take the time to build your professional network. This is something that I, I see lacking um, with a lot of people throughout the different levels. And, you know, uh, we, we do well socializing sometimes. COVID changed that a little bit, disrupted it a little bit, but professionally, socializing with the intent of connecting with people as a resource, that's a strategic thing. That's not um, necessarily for fun. It's very intentional. And so you want to create a space and time for that. Um, so you so that means you have to be ready to, to make that connection. And that includes having your resume up to date, regardless of whether you're moving or not in the role that you're in. It includes um, having your LinkedIn in profile up to date and presentable and creating a professional brand, right? As, as a new manager, you want to start to think of yourself as a management and leadership brand. What do you look like? What do you stand for? Um, you want to take the opportunity. I will say this, I'm always open to connecting. So if you're participating in this webinar, link up with us on LinkedIn. It's I'm, I'm openly inviting you because people hesitate when that's what the platform is for. Um, and so you want your profile to reflect the type of opportunity you present, right? What kind of an opportunity do you present? And so if those things aren't done, you miss the opportunity, the boat sails, and it never comes back, right? You want to ask for referrals and recommendation letters from your managers and the people you work with. It doesn't always have to be a manager. Um, it's always very helpful to see how other colleagues see you and if they're will willing um, you know, to, to speak on your contribution. Challenge yourself on new projects um, and in the workplace and own them. Own them from top to, to from beginning to end. And then request for management leadership training that's specific to your industry. That's really going to make you specialized and give you a competitive advantage. Uh, anything to add to that, Marisa? Yeah, as we go through all of these levels, what you're going to learn is that you need to stretch. You need to move outside your comfort zone in order to progress uh, and to reach those type, these types of goals. 
So um, it takes a lot of energy and education is a big part of it. In too many companies, training is seen as non-productive time where people think, oh, I can't go to training. I have too much to do. I'm suggesting you pause, take advantage of every educational opportunity that you can, any training that you can, that your company provides. It will only help open your mind to other ideas. Yeah. And I will say this, if you're thinking it's a waste of time, you're already on in backwards mode, right? So don't get frustrated when, when, you know, you, the opportunity comes and you're not ready or somebody else doesn't see it in you. So there's that part. But the other thing I will say this, because I didn't have a traditional path, education is not everything. Okay. So there are other ways to succeed and you'll see throughout. Yeah. Yeah. You, but you'll also see throughout this presentation, this webinar, that the recommendations aren't all focused on educational achievement. And the reason that is, is because my journey was filled with many different things. And I moved through the career ladder pretty quickly in, in my journey. And it was because of these things. And so you have to capture the opportunity. I, I would say that that is incredibly important if you're looking to move up is capture the opportunity in the right way at the right time. That is the competitive advantage, That's right? Bad, bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then there's a don't. So don't do this because then you're gonna set yourself up to, to be put in a different category and it's the no-go category, okay, um, for our newer managers. So if you're doing this, stop, or if you, know, or if you did it, don't do it again. Um, abandoning your network, prioritizing your employer or what you're doing, over your own success. There has to be balance between the two. And I know that seems contrary, but it's not, it's aligned. A person that is balanced and understands that the employer is a separate entity from you and that you need to be effective there, but also effective in your own space and on your own time, that is what creates success, okay? It's not the absence of, of your, your personal development. Running professional relationship, ruining professional relationships, burning the bridges, especially with other managers or leadership above your role. Employers come and go, okay, because that's the way it is. It, it, business has needs. Sometimes businesses have to lay off. Sometimes you get new leaders and they start to terminate people. This is all normal in business, unfortunately. So you want to be prepared with colleagues that you've partnered with that you've lived through successful outcomes with, that have mentored you, that have coached you, and not just shift over. Because the reality is it's a very small world. And so you want to keep all of your relationships intact, separate yourself personally from the employer when it comes to your success and your navigation. Missing deadlines, appointments, or meeting times always leaves a bad taste in the other person's mouth. Right. So at least acknowledge it, apologize if it happens, ceasing to develop your skills, overly focusing right on work versus your growth is never going to lead you to success. You could work really hard in the wrong direction and go nowhere fast. I can guarantee that switching jobs without following best business practice, again, kind of aligned with burning bridges, be strategic about your exits. You can do it. You can be strategic. You can be pleasant as you're waving goodbye, it's perfectly good, right? Forgetting to negotiate your salary. You've got a little skin in the game. Every time you level up in management, you have to leverage it and know how to speak to it. Avoiding, getting, avoiding setting career goals. So if you're not setting any career goals at all, you don't have any intention behind the direction, right? That you're moving it. And so people, you will work for other people's dreams. Right. That's there's a quote out there that's very similar to that. But you're not laboring your own. Avoiding uh, setting personal goals. What do you want in life aside from work and career? What do you want that helps you also drive with intentional purpose? Neglecting professional relationships, not taking the time to speak with the colleague, to have coffee with the colleague, to discuss the industry, to discuss subject matter, right, to have a more elevated connection professionally. Prioritizing money over professional growth. Now, I know that's really tempting. I remember many, many decades ago, prioritizing money over growth. And I think if I would have prioritized growth over money, I would have gotten to where I needed to go much faster because the intention would have been with um, in line with the long-term strategy versus short-term. 
and two or three or five dollars um, is not worth as much as the skill that you've gained. Um, and then you can actually negotiate thousands of dollars in your next role, right? So it's that kind of thinking. And then taking a role you're not passionate about. If you don't like what you're doing, get out because it's going to drain you and you're not contributing to the role or those around you. It's just it's just pure drain. Um, anything to add to the don'ts, Marisa? No, I'm going to say keep going. Okay. All right. So here are some entry level management goals. So if you're in entry level, here are some things you could start putting on your goal goals list. Evaluate your skills. Evaluate your experience identify all of the professional resources available to you. Sometimes we don't realize what we have access to and it's simply because we haven't looked, right? And of course, we're at Management Cues are a resource. So you, we could be on that list if you, if you so choose. Create a list of steps to accomplish your ultimate professional goal. What is the ultimate professional goal? Don't be shy about this. If it's like the queen of Egypt, the king of Egypt, that's your goal, then put it on the list, right? Set up a cadence with your manager to obtain routine feedback on performance and areas of opportunity. Now, the routine cadence can be quarterly, can be yearly. It doesn't matter, but do it. That's what matters and do it on a cycle so that you prioritize yourself, okay, and your career. Set a schedule of when you're going to update your professional profiles and resume. Again, quarterly, yearly, doesn't have to be every week, but you do have to have a cadence and intention behind it for you to be successful in that aspect and to think outside of the career you have within the employment environment. Take or participate in at least three management and leadership classes, courses, podcasts, or webinars every six months. Again, you'll see the theme is consistency here. That's what gets you there faster. Attend an industry-specific conference, attend a professional networking event, read a management or leadership book, open up that lens of what it really means. Okay. Anything to add there for our entry level managers, Marisa? Yeah, it's a, it's a broad scope. Um, the point here is not to do everything. The point here is to do what works best for you. Yeah. And do something and have a do list, yep. right? It can't be one thing. You can't say, I want to be, you know, an operations manager and do one thing. Like that's not going to happen. And right. it has you need to a be, plan. You need a plan and you have to be consistent with your, with your relevance to, to that goal. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to hit mid-level. Okay. So here we go. Mid-level. I know it's a lot of information. Those of you that register will get it on the deck. Okay. And you'll get the recording as well. So getting into a mid-level management role. Be prepared to articulate how you've made an impact in your current management role. So once you get into mid-level, you need to be able to do this to be successful. You have to be able to explain what kind of an impact you're starting to make. Explain it through metrics, what you've helped increase or decrease. That's the easiest way to put it. Um, if you don't know and, and you don't have an idea of what you've helped decrease or increase, start by defining what that is because that's really critical. And that is also something that you should include in your resumes. Reference company KPIs. Be clear on your performance feedback and documentation. Request an opportunity to interview for any higher level management role. So you have to make the ask and you have to make it clear. Request an individual development plan. Okay, so some of these things you'll hear on a recurring basis throughout the journey because it's something that should be part of the plan and will get you there faster because the people, the leadership on the other end will see that even if you can't get it at that time, or even if the position isn't available, that you're committed to, to getting to that level and that it's important to you. Request, um, uh, identify management and leadership goals. So have a list for, for either, right? What kind of a manager do you want to be? What kind of a leader do you want to be? Learn to speak authentically about your strengths and weaknesses. We all have them. Okay. So it's, it's, um, in the past, I've seen people only speak to their strengths, um, or speak to weaknesses that are strengths and try to turn that around, um, an experienced interview, see the interviewer sees right through that. So don't do that instead be authentic about what you're going to do about your weaknesses. It's a much stronger delivery and more authentic. Um, as an HR person on the other end, um, any comments on that particular 
um, uh, example? Yeah, when you're thinking about interviewing, a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost, metrics are fabulous, and um, you can use some more soft uh, accomplishments as well, right? Where you've overcome a conflict or where you've been able to help someone do something differently than they did before behavioral change. Uh, when you're thinking about interviewing, consider a situation or task, the actions that you took and the result. Those three aspects of your answer uh, will make your answer very powerful. And um, uh, for yourself, you might want to, and maybe for your, your role, you, you might want to keep a weekly, a running weekly update of what you've accomplished. Um, that way, yeah. come, you know, come promotion time or performance management time, you have a reference and you can say, oh yeah, I forgot that I did that, right? And uh, mm -hmm. a, a more comprehensive list. Yeah, great, great um, ideas there. And, you know, for the record, I always kept a list throughout all of my different roles of what I did, what I changed, what I contribute. It got more and more sophisticated as I went through the journey. Uh, it never failed. I never had to invent the wheel and knew exactly what it was that I contributed. And because of that, I, I actually have a record that I set, right? Within six months in a new role, I, I get promoted. That's kind of my own personal uh, ticker there. And it's worked the, the right way every time. And it's because of these things that we're sharing with you today. So you want to build strong professional relationships and colleagues with colleagues, management and leadership in the organization. So you want to start to get ready for more senior type of roles. You need to connect with everybody professionally in the right way. And this is not being their friends it is absolutely not that it's being impactful with the relationship that you have with them and helping them succeed while you're succeeding. It's more that right. Yep. Um, anything to absolutely. add to that last piece? Nope. That's awesome. Okay, great. Okay. So mid-level. So what exactly is mid-level? So as you gain experience, you're now past the entry level management, you move into mid-level management stage. So this is when you're managing larger teams and more complex projects. So things start to get more involved and you're talking about volume in terms of managing team members, right? So you're past two or three, you're more at five and seven and you start contributing strategically to organizational goals. So now your impact is much higher. And so your intention should be a lot more aligned because your impact uh, through, through uh, performance is, is means more but so does negligence, so does the bad things. They're more harmful. So hence the relationship with responsibility. So what kind of skills does a mid-level manager need to have or work on? Well, now we're getting serious, right? Now, you, you, now you're in the relationship, okay? Effective leadership skills, strategic thinking, conflict resolution, budget management. You have to tie in now your actions with the financials, you have to start at mid-level. Performance management, you have to know how to performance manage people, how to qualify it, how to quantify it at the mid-level. You need to start effectively communicating. You have to be a little bit above entry level and the rest of the team. You have to be a little bit more sophisticated and focus on outcomes versus your personal feelings around something, right? A little bit more discipline at, at mid-level. Higher attention to detail, accuracy, becomes a very important part of what you're doing and what you're delivering, right? So there's a little bit more, um, a higher degree of work ethic, I think that plays out at mid-level. Strong professional acumen, you're now setting an example and it's very clear across the organization, right? At mid-level. You want to have knowledge of best business practices. You're training people, you're directing people, you're communicating with people at mid-level. At mid-level, a lot of the times you're running a department, okay, um, or a project team. And so your professional acumen, your knowledge of business practices is part of what you're bringing to the table. That's part of the impact that you need to make. So knowledge of compliance, employment law, and HR, um, is it's non-negotiable at this point. Mm -hmm. Right. It's it's non-negotiable at every point, but at this point, you're supposed to be a resource in these areas. Um, anything to add to that, Marisa? For best practices, I would suggest getting involved with uh, or um, uh, uh, registering for newsletters in your industry. 
right? There are so many out there. Find the ones that are associated with your industry and of course, um, read them uh, to learn uh, about the best practices that, that would be good for you. Yeah, great, great tip there. And that's the same for compliance and regulatory. If you look up the agencies that manage in your industry or that guide your industry, they usually have newsletters too. So subscribing to that makes you be a little bit more well-versed in what's happening in real time. So that's a great piece of advice there. And remember at mid, at the midpoint, you're a resource now, you're a go-to in management. So you should be very well-versed as what, in what's happening in these areas, okay? You don't have to be an expert. You have to be well-versed, okay? Okay, so what happens or what helps mid-level managers with career upward mobility? So if you're in mid-level right now, you're a manager, right? A program, uh, uh, operations manager, customer service manager, that's mid-level. And you want to get into senior, a more senior position. Here's where things start to change, Okay. You want to track your own performance. And so what that means is wins, milestones, uh, achievements, things that you're most proud of. You have to be able to speak to these things because now it's highly about impact. Okay. Have a mentor inside the organization, right? You always want to have somebody that you're learning from inside and out. Have mentors outside. Um, I would say that when I got to mid-level, um, I received this advice from a, an amazing professor that I had, okay, in my master's program. And he said, Myra, find five mentors. And he gave me the number in all different areas. So what I ended up doing was having a, a mentor in finance, a mentor in operations, a mentor in HR, a mentor in business development, and I think a mentor in operations. And those, those mentors are still my mentors. And they've guided me all the way up to this point, all the way past executive management. Into, into a whole bunch of other things I never in my life would have thought would have happened, but they have. And so it has worked so well because I became a very well-rounded executive. And so it's important for you to understand that strategic opportunity there. And I have mentees who are using me as an operations mentor, right? Or a management mentor and kudos to them for stepping into that, right? They call me with questions. They ask me for feedback. Um, and I'm more than happy to pay it forward and return the favor. Um, you want to schedule time for training and development strategically and intentionally. So now it's not about what people are offering you. It's you saying, I have to make sure I take at least X amount of training classes or courses or education or opportunities this year. It's part of your plan now at mid-level going into senior. Continue to build and reinforce your professional network. Your network starts to mean more and more, not less and less as you move up the ladder. It's more and more because now you're starting to build a case for yourself. Maybe you're going to be a subject matter expert. Maybe you are going to need a connection or somebody to back you up to, to validate that you are well-versed in an area. Those things start to matter. And not only that, if, if things go wrong with your current employer, which they could, or simply you want to move on, sometimes it's not about it going wrong. Sometimes you're just ready for the next thing. The network is what's going to help you get there faster. Okay. Have your professional profiles reflect up-to-date information on platforms like LinkedIn as you move through the ladder. So you, you start to really see yourself as a brand um, when you're getting into senior level and what you represent. Okay, so you want to have everything updated. You want to mentor other team members at this stage. If you're ready for leadership, you're ready to create other leaders and you have evidence behind that. That's why it's important to mentor other people to help create other managers and leaders. You want to request for more advancement in management um, and leadership training specific to your industry. Okay, so you want to focus, you want to have um competitive advantage in the marketplace, in the industry that you operate in. And that only happens if you're up to date with what's happening. And so you have to take part of these things. Take care of your professional relationship. At this point, if you're going all the way up, your network is everything. Okay. So there's a dollar value tied behind that network. Anything to add to that, Marisa? Um the value of getting multiple mentors is to help you understand what you like, what you don't like, what you're good at, what you're not good at. As you progress through leadership, 
you want to surround yourself with people who bring the skills that you don't have or yeah. the skills that you don't want to work on, uh, work on or prefer not to uh, focus in. So um, that there's a, a, an incredible value there of having multiple multiple mentors. Yeah, and I can tell you strategically how I used it as I was navigating leadership and management. I used them to help me problem solve. Mm. So the employer wasn't aware that I was stuck or confused or whatever, because I solved it because I immediately, if I was stuck, I would go to my mentors and ask them, have you run across this problem before? How did you solve it, right? So I was always in a resourceful in my roles and succeeded because of it. And it was directly tied to my mentors. And so if my mentors are hearing this, um, I love you. I adore you. Thank you for everything. Um, Okay. So mid-level management don'ts. Okay. So here's at mid-level, you should not be doing this. Okay. Not having a professional network or support system. If you don't have a professional network or professional support system, you have to get on that now. Okay, you have to start connecting. Start by connecting with Marisa and I. We're always here for a message, for a quick question. You know, you don't know us, but that's because we haven't connected, right? It doesn't have to stay that way. Failing to address professional disconnects. If you're having issues with a colleague, address it, fix it, resolve it. If you're going to stay in that environment, it just shows that you're ready for higher level leadership. Problems are going to happen. People are tough. They're complex. We're problematic. The people who solve are the ones who become the leaders. Those are the people who you can collaborate with in the future. Not setting personal and professional boundaries. At mid-level, if you're going to go into senior, you have to separate personal from business, and it has to be very clear and distinct, okay? Failing to develop your skills further. Common theme, development, continuous learning is going to be something that takes you all the way through. Switching jobs without following best business practice, same thing, right? You can leave. Leave gallantly, right? Waving with a smile on your face, wishing everybody well. That's the right way to do it. Forgetting to negotiate your salary. Again, it's again uh, linked to knowing your own value and what you're contributing. Not setting career goals that are aligned with your personal goals. You're a whole human being. So professional and personal have to be connected and in sync for you to thrive and be happy. Not identifying what the next level of growth looks like for you. Uh, from a management and leadership perspective. So not knowing what a senior level looks like, not knowing what a director level entails. Prepare yourself to navigate, right? Know what your next landing point looks like. Not identifying what you're good at, being a jack of all trades, master of none. So a good example of that in the workforce is is somebody who knows how to do everything, um, but they're not the expert at anything. They're just very helpful, very resourceful. That's all great, but that's not going to take you to where you want to go. Be focused, be an expert, a subject matter expert. You know, um, I think that focusing in on operations, I could have done many things um, as somebody who enjoys problem solving, but focusing on operations was one of the best things I ever did uh, because it allowed me to just get really good at that piece and then create a competitive advantage And I knew exactly how to explain the outcome and the impact that I make because I was specialized in that area, right? Um, Anything to add to that piece, Marisa? Um, Yeah, do do what you love, (laughs) right? Do what you love. Uh, Dr. Meyer, we're running short on time, so we'll continue. We'll get through everything just for those of you who are uh, in the webinar and you can pick uh, pick up on the webinar when you have to uh, to cut out, if you have to cut out at the top of the hour. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. Yes, we're almost done, but we are going to be over. Okay, so mid-level management goals. Formally assess your management and leadership skills. Identify your communication style. Identify your management style. So you're starting to see the detail that is, is, is coming up with these senior uh, to executive, right? You're getting ready to really understand yourself as a manager and a leader. Identify if you have a professional network intact and active. Are you connected? Can you rely on them? Can you do you ask them questions? Do you have coffees to discuss where your career is at? Right. I say coffee because I love coffee. Um, confirm if you're, you're you have a professional support system. That means you can go to them when you're stuck, when you right. have a problem, when you need a particular piece of advice. Right. Do you have people like that around you that are not your friends? It's different. It's a different relationship. 
yes, it is a different relationship because you want them to be bold with you. You want them to give you the real deal, not, not, you know, not tell you how great better. you are. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Create a list of steps of what you need to accomplish to get to your ultimate professional goal. Acknowledge how far you've come and what you've achieved. So this mid-level point, you've come to a certain place. Take the time to pat yourself on the back. Okay. Because it'll keep you going. It can't be like, oh, I can't believe I've been here for this long. Okay. That's fine. But you've also acquired skill. You've also helped X amount of people. You've also trained and developed X number of, of employees, right? So just yeah, go, be clear. Go back, to, go back to that list of accomplishments. Yes. Right? And review it. Uh, it'll, it'll make you feel good if nothing else. <laughs> yeah, if nothing else, it'll give you a sense of what value you bring to the table. Uh, yeah. Make a formal ask of leadership um, and make sure that you're sure of what the next level looks like in your organization right? Don't guess, confirm it. Even if the position is not available, what's the immediate next level for you? Make sure that you set a schedule um, to update your professional profiles, whatever it is, monthly, yearly, whatever, but make it a routine now. Take or participate in at least three management, uh, HR, employment law, and leadership classes, courses, podcasts, or webinars every six months. So make sure you're covering those areas so that you're a well-rounded manager. Because even if you have a specific thing that you're good at, in order to manage people, you have got to know your HR, you have got to know employment law, you have got to be a leader, right? So those things don't escape management. It's true of every manager. And so having balance throughout those areas will help you be much more effective. Attend industry-specific conferences and then uh, read books on management, HR, and leadership. It'll just make you such a stronger manager. Okay. We're going to get into senior level here and sorry, click happy over here. Um, get it. So here we go. Getting into a senior management role. So this is from mid-level to senior. And we want at this level to clearly communicate what role you're interested in to your HR leader or, or manager, right? You want to be able to make the clear ask. Know why you want to be in a senior level role. At mm -hmm. that point, intention passion, everything comes together. There has to be a reason why, and it can't be just monetary. I get the monetary part. Um, mm -hmm. That was always part of my equation. It just wasn't the bulk of my equation, right? There was more. And so think about what difference you want to make. Think about what it would mean for you personally in, in terms of personal growth. Think about if there's a dream or something that's tied into it that's more intrinsic. Um, you want to start thinking about it at this at this time. You want to create a development plan on your own. What is your own development plan? By this time, you should know what your gaps are. Um, you should start to fill those, right? As you head on to, to bigger, bigger, bigger things, right? Build strong relationship with your leadership team. Now it's very strategic. You want to bring people together, not pull them apart. And so a person that can do that becomes essential in an organization. And so it's important for you from mid to senior level to be that person, okay? Position yourself to be an exceptional colleague, an exceptional professional in, in those environments. Highlight your management and leadership experience. So make sure you know how to bucket that um, when you're speaking about yourself. Lay out plans that create a roadmap to success be prepared to differentiate the difference between manager uh, and a director level role. So this is where you start to get ready for a director level role. You want to be able to speak to the difference between a senior and director level role. You want to look for the opportunities to serve others because leadership now means a little bit more. Leading people is it becomes more important as you move up the, pi the pipeline, right? Learn from the best. Be selective with your mentors at this point. Be strategic about the people you're learning from and what they've accomplished. Okay, make sure that what they've accomplished is similar to what you want to accomplish because everything else is noise. Okay, they've done it. There's, there's a reason they've succeeded. Simplify concepts for team members, connect the dots and communicate with the intention of making an impact. Start to bring everything around you together and have it make sense to people. Okay, so you start to be more of a connector. 
At senior level, this is what it looks like. Senior managers are responsible for, ma for major departments and business units. So your placement in the business starts to shift and your responsibility does too, right? More mm -hmm. um, widespread outcomes are coming from, from what you're doing. They play a crucial role in shaping organizational strategy and driving growth. Okay, so now it's long-term impact mm -hmm. that is really coming into play. So these are the skills at senior level that we start to look for, okay? And I say we, because a lot of the times Marisa and I are helping people find talent for this level, okay? Visionary leadership. They see the future. They can forecast, right? They, they can express these types of things. Stakeholder engagement. They know how to engage groups of people. Financial acumen. They understand the impact financially of the decisions that they make through management. Okay, there's a connection there. Decision-making. They're effective decision makers and aren't afraid to make decisions. And people who make decisions uh, can't please everybody. So you can't be a people pleaser and you have to be ready for that, right? That's getting, getting higher up there. That's why it's lonely at the top, guys, because you have to make some tough decisions. Uh, analytical skills. You can look at data and come up with a conclusion and see a trend, right? That's really what that speaks to. Adaptability. You're flexible. It's not always good in business. Business moves in waves and they're up and down. And as a leader and a manager, you have to lead and guide people through it, good or bad. Okay. You don't get to not do it because it's uncomfortable. Um, you know, Marisa and I have been a part of massive layoffs where we had to make tough decisions and it's never fun, but there is a good and bad way to do it. And it's leading through it is always a good way. Okay. Creativity, strong verbal skills. You have to communicate at a higher level. Um, you can't hide behind the scenes. You have to be okay with making presentations. You have to be okay with talking to your people publicly and privately. Um, you have to regulate your emotions at this level. You are, you're such an example at the senior level. You cannot be losing it um, when something gets tough or something is uncomfortable. And you have to really guard yourself from taking things too personal because you're in a business setting. Okay, anything to add there, Marisa? Uh, just to cover change management, um, uh, you know, change management uh, really encompasses communication, training, performance management. Um, it, it is a very wide set of skills that are absolutely necessary and change happens every day. So um, uh, something to be thinking about on how you bring everything together when, when, um, the, business when the business makes a change. Oh, absolutely. And it happens all the time. Those waves change is embedded mm -hmm. in all of that. Okay. So yeah. it definitely becomes challenging, but it is a requirement of that level. Right. So again, navigating your, your path, your career is being self-aware enough to know that this is a requirement of you. So yeah. what, what helps senior level managers with career upward mobility? So now you're a senior manager, but you really want to go the next level up. Right. So here's uh, how it goes down. You want to track your own performance, same concept, have mentors in different areas. And you see the, how consistent it is. You have to continue to grow with these, so with this mindset. In that particular case, it's not necessarily the same mentors, right? Like there's, there's, there's yeah. a, a need to change out your mentors too. Yeah. And if you have sophisticated enough mentors that you don't need to, and at, and at the entry and mid-level, you got your CFOs, COOs, CMOs all lined up, kudos to you. I mean, really, because it sets you up with this foresight and that I, I had part, part of my group of mentors were already at that level um, and it made all the difference because they knew mm -hmm. where, to, where to guide me. So again, that that is a great point, Marisa. Um, yeah, can, you can change people up right? But in your yeah. mind, have your, have your group. Um, you want to, again, plan strategically what you're going to do that year. So the focus becomes more and more defined around your professional acumen and your personal growth. It's no longer an afterthought. It's part of your success. It's part of your request for promotion. It's exactly and where you're supposed to be. It's not necessarily going to training. It could be leading a conference leading uh, some type of training activity within your organization, right? So there's a shift that starts to occur. 
yeah, you start to learn in different ways. And I think that's what that points to what Marisa just said is your learning, your training and development happens to a different degree, right? So that's absolutely true. Your network is now extensive, right? People talk about you when you're not there. That's what that means, right? That's the power of the network. When an opportunity comes up and they need an operations expert, I know somebody, of you. Mm-hmm. right? I, I, I need an HR person. I can't tell you how many, how many things Marisa is called for because of her HR acumen. So, it, and it's not coincidence. It's the network. That's how it works, right? So you want to be um, present in people's mind when they think of that particular area. And if you don't have a network, that will never happen. You'll always be in that cubicle, in that office, And that's as much as people know about you. So don't put yourself in that position. Define your individual professional brand, right? So now you have corporate pictures. Now you represent yourself a certain way. You have a statement around the things that you're passionate about. You're a contributor to the professional network, uh, not just a passenger, right? You're maybe a destination now. And, And that's important. That's an important distinction. Have your resume up to date for the same reasons. You just want to be prepared. Um, Mentor managers and upcoming leaders in the organization. Now people come to you because they want to be mentored by you. Now they want to achieve what you've achieved, right? And you want to contribute um, to to that growth that takes place in your organization and the, the environment around you. Identify your plan for growth with your HR leader and manager in what areas and start succession planning. So now you're saying, I'd like to get into executive leadership. Can you point me in the right direction? What should I work on? What should I look into? Um, What do you think I can improve on? And you're much more assertive. It's no longer, you're not tiptoeing. You're dancing right up to the HR leader. You're saying, hey, let's go have lunch. I'd love to talk to you about what my ambitions and my goals are, right? Okay. So what you should not do at this level, okay, now you've reached like the third tier, there's still things you should not do that I see done and people just kind of compromise their, their, their trajectory. You don't want to lead with a know-it-all approach, okay? This is where you're humble but knowledgeable. You're impactful, but you're reserved, right? You're not this off-putting presence because you've gotten to a certain level. You fail to provide clarity right? You confuse everybody. You're not an effective communicator. You don't want to do that. You you fail to provide a, a access to information. This means you're withholding information from other people because you're, you're threatened by them and you think they're going to come and take your role. Don't be that person. It's petty and it, it speaks the opposite of leadership, okay? Mm-hmm. D- uh, don't alienate dedicated employees, okay? For the same reason, y- you moving up does it make anybody less? It actually makes you more responsible for them, not less. Micromanage outside of office hours, respect people's time, don't do that, okay? Jump to conclusions, investigate, do the fair thing, create objectivity, You know, make sure you follow through the same way consistently when things come up, because things will. Uh, you know, Fail to set clear goals and expectations. You have to do that for the team member that you work for or with, just like you do for yourself. It's part of the role, okay? Fail to delegate responsibly. So there is such a thing as toxic delegation. Um, So if you don't know the difference, um, you know, you should because it's really damaging. Don't just hand everything else to the people below you because you think they're below you because that's not how management or leadership should work. Set a bad example, of leadership and management, get all the way to senior level just to make it all go away, right? But that's an ego. That's an ego trip. It's an ego trip, and it's not taking you anywhere. Fun. Um, <laughs> resist change, right? Don't resist change. Change is coming. Equip yourself. Continuous learning will help you be more adaptable. So don't put yourself in a corner where you're you're immovable. You're no longer relevant right? And the only way we stay relevant is is by learning. Fail to communicate effectively. That impacts all of these don'ts, right? Um, Make sure that you're continuously working on your communication style and how you disseminate information. It's so critical. 
Uh, we all need to continuously work on it because there are different communication styles in the workplace and we have different personalities to partner with. Okay, anything yeah, this, else? This, yeah, this particular slide really speaks to the need uh, and the power of emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. right? So if you've got a good handle on your emotional intelligence, these don'ts will not happen. Correct, correct, yep, okay. So here are some goals at this level. Develop expertise in risk management. You're now responsible for a lot more. So risk management becomes a lot more important regardless of what you're managing, what department you're managing. Enhance your emotional intelligence. Look, it's like she knows me, right? It becomes such a thing um, as you move up the ladder. Implement effective, effective mentorship programs. So start to speak in a mentorship type of speak. Create other mentors, mentor people. Drive diversity, equity, and inclusion within your team. At the senior level, you need to understand the dynamic of the demographic in front of you and how that is impacting operations. It's a more elevated understanding of the world around you. Create networking and professional career building goals. Make it a system, a process, right? Something that is, is um, it's no longer a mystery at this point anymore. Right? Create personal branding and thought leadership goals to help you establish yourself professionally to stand out. So at senior level, you need to start working on what kind of a thought leader am I? What area am I actually providing value in? Because that's what's going to take you to the next stage. Set continuous improvement goals, develop industry foresight. So now you're forecasting yep. in your industry, what's coming down the pipeline, right? Um, Marisa and I saw a lot of HR legislation coming down the pipeline last year, and now we're here and we, we saw it coming because we understood we had foresight. Align your goals with organizational mission. Now you're tying things in at a very strategic level and you're looking at mission, vision, core values, and how that's being represented across the organization. Champion innovation initiative. So now you're becoming a champion of things. Okay. You're, you're again, you're not a passenger here. You're championing. You have a sword and shield, right? If you need a visual, that's what you look like. Seek high-level leadership and management training. Now you're asking for more elevated management and leadership training, maybe executive-level management training, right? Which is a whole different ballgame. It's very different from the prior tiers. Okay. Now we're going to get into executive level. This is the last piece. Um, I know we've gone quite long. Again, we will forward the recording for anybody who registered. If you need to escape, we totally understand and we'll get that to you, okay? But we're gonna keep going here. Getting into an executive level management role looks like this. Be prepared to articulate how you've made an impact across the organization and on the bottom line. So now you're tying everything into the financial outcome at the executive level, okay? Make sure you're positioned for leadership. This means to ensure you're an executive trajectory, right? Look at what that might look like. Make strategic moves internally. Go beyond meeting management expectations. Reinvent the way people work in the organization. Okay, so that's larger, more systemic, more organizational, more culture, right? More emotional intelligence around all of that because you're mobilizing an entire aspect of, of an organization potentially. You want to increase your visibility within the organization, which means you have to step up and step out, right? You have to make tough decisions. Find opportunities to make yourself and your work stand out. So you have to be able to speak to the work that you're doing when you're doing it well. You can't just wait for it to be and, acknowledged. And not just your work, but the work of the team that you manage. Correct. Yes, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's what you're leading, what you're organizing, what you're coordinating. Right. You want to meet one-on-one -on -one with senior leadership and develop strong professional relationships. So you want to ask for that meeting. Can I meet with you? Can I have lunch with you? I'd like to talk to you about a, a few a few things that are on my mind, right? And that could be with your CEO, with your COO, with your HR leader, but you're stepping into these more evolved, sophisticated conversations. You want to become and, and be kind of... Uh, the, the effective communicator example in the environment, right? You wanna be the person who creates transparency for people. Work on problems other managers and leaders aren't solving for, but that need to be solved, right? Stretch that muscle, get to work for something that benefits the company, not necessarily you 
personally directly. Right. Get ready to compete at this level. Competition is tough. You want an executive level role, you're going to have to be ready to compete. And it's a competition, you know, sometimes a bloodbath. But if that's what you want, then, you know, <laughs> you got to get ready, right? Any any thoughts on, on that piece, Marisa? No, I'm going to let that one go. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. It's tough. You have to be ready, right? You have to be ready. Okay, so executive level management. This is the pinnacle of a management career, right? It's That's all the way at the top where you hold top level executive uh, positions like CEO, CFO, executives are accountable for overall organizational success, right? So you're no, no longer responsible for a group. Um, you're responsible for everybody and the entire outcome. And there's a, a lot of pressure with that, okay? And so you have to be able to tolerate it. So in order to tolerate it and to lead it and to execute it successfully, here are some of the skills that you need to do that. You need big picture thinking. You need a uh, great decision-making, yeah. strategic forecasting. Okay, you have to anticipate and you have to have a plan for these things. You have to be impartial, right? So part of an executive's job is to make decisions that benefit the organization as a whole. So yeah. it, you, know, you have to make tough decisions here. Process information quickly and effectively you have to be able to negotiate 150%. Uh, that's going to be a big aspect of what you do for the company. Uh, cultural awareness, you have to know what's going on with your team and your people and what it's pointing to, what the trends are. You have to manage stress really well because it is a stressful role. Okay, there's, there's, it's, uh, if you care about people, executive management is that much more stressful because you know the outcomes and the decisions you make impact everybody. Adaptability, you have to move with the flow, the changing markets, um, and, and make decisions that are reasonable um, and, and effective, right, to get you through. Uh, interpersonal, you have to have interpersonal skills to relate to the people who are looking at you for guidance, who are looking at you for longevity, who are looking at you for career advancement, right? And you have to be a team builder. You have to recognize that you have to bring people together. This is a leadership role. This has shifted now more from a management to a leadership role, even though it's executive level management. Anything to add there? Yeah, you're bringing people together uh, in a different way too. So you're bringing together large groups of people. You could be bringing together uh, a group of people at a conference. You could be bringing together uh, a, a group of people across the organization. So um, it really is an, an incredibly uh, influential role in an organization. And just keep in mind, people are watching you all the time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the eyes are on you. So you have to be comfortable with that too. Mm -hmm. um, and so what does upward mobility look like from the executive position? So you've reached the top. <laughs> now you have to keep your role. <laughs> now you have to be effective. <laughs> Okay, so after everything we've just gone through and you've done all of that and you've navigated through your career, um, then you have to retain your role if you want to stay in the in the workforce in that way. So you continue to track your performance, but you're doing it based on company outcomes, not necessarily individual outcomes. Um, you have mentors and consultants now that you experts in the field. It's now not just professional colleagues. You're looking for the best and the brightest to teach you how to be better. And you start to partner with them in different ways to help the large organizations kind of move through or the business be successful. You start to schedule uh, training and development. It's very different at the executive level. You're talking about visionary work. You're getting outside your own head. It's it, because of the stressors, because of everything that you take on, you start to utilize the service of people who think outside the box, which we have a great, great partner named Craig Provost. If you're listening, Craig, um, who is amazing at getting leaders to think outside the box, right? So you start to become part of other larger infrastructures to continue to grow your network at that level. You become part of a board, right? I sit on a board for startups now um, to teach them how to do the things that I've learned to do. That's an example, right? Of you taking it from an executive level to another space. You take part in the community, you pay back, you pay it forward, you start to contribute in different ways for upcoming leaders or, or whatever your, your area of expertise is. 
you stand out as an executive, you make sure you're presenting yourself a certain way that your LinkedIn is set up a certain way because now you are a brand. Now you're being recognized. Now you're being contacted for your, your expertise and your subject matter knowledge. Uh, you start to mentor senior and executives. Marisa and I work with executive level people now. Um, we help them navigate through their challenges and partner with them so that they're successful. Um, you start your own company, right? You go that route. Um, anything uh, to add there, Marisa? You could write a book. You could write a book, <laughs> right? Give back. But at this level, your goals look very different from what they looked like at Absolutely. entry level. Okay, so the don'ts. So yes, you have don'ts at every level, my friends. So here it is for executives. Don't be unavailable. That is terrible leadership. Yep. Don't be inaccessible. You can't be too busy to lead the organization you were commissioned to lead. It's like failing yep. to do your job. Uh, fail to focus on developing talent. You have to create other leaders in an organization as part of executive leadership. It's part of the commission. Fail to provide regular feedback. Not creating transparency, especially at the senior level or director level type of teams is the biggest mistake. Um, you carry then a burden, you are adding to your to your workload and you're really um, pulling against your, your career trajectory, right? You're taking away from the wins that you had to have to get to the point that you're at now, right? So you're creating negatives there. Um, focus on short-term growth. Looking at the company being obsessed with the bottom line short term really negatively impacts long term. And, and that will affect your career because ultimately you'll look at like an ineffective executive. Okay, so be careful with that. Micromanaging, you're an executive now. It's vision, strategy, and culture. Like you have got to keep your eye on the ball and not be distracted by the things that now these other managers at the prior levels should be in tune with. Focus on setbacks that are outside of, of the, your control. We all have things we cannot control. Do not obsess over them. Focus on what you can change, what you can impact, and what you can do at the executive level. You'll drive yourself crazy if you don't. Prioritizing external relationships over internal ones. You have got to give people time of day and attention if you're going to lead them. They're not gonna follow you if you don't. And so you wanna be careful about balancing where you're spending your relationship time, okay? Fail to get to know the stage the organization's in. You're at the top, so you have no idea what's happening throughout the levels. You can't possibly lead that way. You're, you're leading blind. There's just, there's no transparency, right? Go it alone. At the executive level, do not go it alone. You need help. You need more help than you've ever needed despite arriving at the top. Okay. We all need it. Um, I don't know where I'd be without my mentors. They are a godsend and they continue to help me be successful. And that includes Marisa. So thank you for that. Okay. Executive level management goals. So here's what it looks like from a goal standpoint. You want to create a list of new goals you want to accomplish uh, to get your ultimate lifetime achievements, right? So now we're moving past professional career. We're looking at lifetime achievements at this point. Like what do you want to, right? Mm -hmm. yes, right? Create a roadmap for the year. Map out your year, have fun doing it. Get inspired because you're at a certain level. You have that opportunity. Build and design new products and services. Get out there, create something new. Develop and mentor the next wave of leaders, right? Get ready to position other people. Create that equity that we talked about, right? For other leaders to be executives as well. Mm -hmm. Close 5 million in new revenue for the company. Figure out how to do that. Help sales and marketing teams add 40 million in new leads, right? You're talking about a whole different ball game here. Build a base of happy customers. Implement a proper budget for planning across the organization. Like these are very complex, in, involved goals, but you're at that level now. Your goals should look like this. Maintain 24 months of runway for the business. Create continuity, sustainability. How do you do that? Complex, dynamic, challenging, exciting. Create an opportunity for people. Identify where and how you want to invest your time. Your time is everything now, right? So, Give it, give it the interest that it deserves at the executive level. 
Okay, we've arrived at key takeaways. Thank you for staying along the ride for those of you that could. Key takeaways, continuous learning. From the beginning of your management career, you will need to continue to invest in your professional and personal growth, period. Make that part of the equation at all times, always. always. Your management brand. You have a management brand if you want to be a manager, right? Start to build it. Be intentional. You want to succeed? Have a brand. Network. The network you build is key component to in the success you have in your career. You have got to give some time to your network, okay? Support system. We all need help throughout every single step of the journey, no matter what. If you haven't created a support system, please do that. You'll be so much success, so much more successful, so much faster. And then it's about the people. In management, if you're going to succeed, you have to care about people. You have to like them, okay? That it, it is what it is. And yep. you have to help them be successful for you to be successful. It has yep. to be intertwined. Um, okay, I will pass it back to Marisa. Thank you so much for your patience and for staying along. Yeah, one of the leaders that I work with says that companies don't grow, people grow and they bring the company along. So um, absolutely love that phrase. And uh, I think it's absolutely um, amazing uh, in the scope of building an organization and building a career. So as we close, as we conclude today's session, uh, I encourage you to take what you've learned and apply it, uh, figure out what you can do or can't do, but put a plan together. Uh, keep in mind that the five functions of management are absolutely critical to navigating your career. So you can use those five functions. If you don't know what they are, go check them out on the website on uh, managementqs.org. Revisit this content. Uh, to revisit this content, the recording will be sent to you along with the deck to all of those who registered and participated in today's session. Um, and of course, we invite you to stay involved and continue your emphasis on development. We have additional resources available, uh, such as the very popular management planner that can be found on the website again at managementqs.org. Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and stay updated on upcoming events. Submit some questions or just share your feedback. Uh, we invite you to do so. Thank you for being part of today's webinar. We'll look forward to seeing you again real soon. Bye.